Howdy folks, and in this episode of Smoogleville, I'll be showing you how to build this rather intriguing and novel clapper gate. The gate you can never leave open. So I'm gonna take some measurements. This is the this is the gateway we're gonna replace. This is kind of like this is a goner, this gate, so I'm gonna uh, put our clapper gate in front of this gate these two posts here uh, and it's going to be a bit wider because of the mechanics of it but let's see now we're talking about a we've got about a what a four foot just over I'm gonna cut a three foot slot into the into the uprights and I've got to do that part of the job first and that's going to be the fun part. The job is all about the slotted posts. And so I'm going to get those started right now. That'll be the first thing we make. We can't do anything else until we got those. So come this way and we shall slot some posts. Okay, so just a couple of safety points before we do this, because um, I'm, I'm going to be wearing some safety goggles, of course, because we're using a spin saw. I'm going to actually use this mask as well for dust. And one other thing, because I'm handling some fairly large lumber, I'm going to, I'm wearing some, some good safe capped boots as well. You want to wear, you know, sneakers wouldn't be any good when you're, moving around some very heavy lumber so just a couple of safety points there and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark this up we need a a three foot slot that starts about five inches actually I'll go six inches from the top I'm going to put a rounded top on this as well I'll cut that on the I'll do that later on the bandsaw. I'm going to try and get a nice rounded top on that. But let's see where we start. So I'm going to go with from six inches down three foot. <coughs> excuse me, six inches. <coughs> so it's 42 right there. Okay. And up to this end. Right, so this is where the cut starts. And I'm going to take this right around the post that's uh because i'll need the mark on both sides so i'll take that right round same here right so the first step is to drop the saw in to this post here so let's get set up to do that now a couple of things I've done with this saw and I wouldn't ordinarily recommend this uh, but I've I've made the this little step larger and as I need an inch and a quarter from each edge okay so what I've done but as luck would have it this distance here from the inside of that blade to this edge is an inch and a quarter so I've got this snug up to the edge of the bed of my of my skill saw there all right so that's the first thing this blade here I would never recommend doing this but because I'm going to do a plunge cut I need the safety out of the way so look I've put a, a self-tapping screw in a small hole in there just so I can trap this temporarily in a backward position now don't try this at home kids I'm a trained professional okay but that is not something I'd normally recommend but is necessary in order to get the accuracy I need for this cut and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two slots on each on each side all right and then I'm gonna flip this over and do the same to so I can cut out about a one inch slot in the middle of this post all right so I'm thinking the skill saw hand saw and some drill bits are going to be the way to go to actually get access to these and pull them out so and this is why I overwhelmed the safety fence on this let's hope I don't live to regret this Okay, so we've, this is one side of it. We've got one side of the slot 
inch and a quarter each side, giving us a one inch slot in the middle. I'm now going to flip that over and do the same on this side between the same two pencil lines. I didn't have a fresh battery. Alright, well folks, <laughs> I don't seem to have any freshly charged batteries and I've, I've used up all three of them already. Uh, obviously a mains powered skill saw would have been uh, a, a better tool for this job, but I don't have one. So uh, I'm going to go and do what we do when batteries are charging. So it's time for a tea break, peeps. So in theory, it should have met in the middle, <laughs> which it has. And now, actually, I'm going to go and get my rip saw. So I'm going to use this is a this is much more of a ripping saw. We've got deeper teeth right here, and so this is good for cutting with the grain, which is what I'm doing here. And so I'm going to drop that into the slot. Hopefully, it fits. Yep. And I'm going to use this because at the moment, if I where's my pencil? There it is. If I, what we've got in here is that from the blade, right? So I've got to, I've got to cut this because it will obviously. There's still some material behind there that I've got to get rid of. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put this on the saw horses, and I can get right over it. Then let's uh, move this. I can get my knee on it. I can get right over the job and I can get a real good two-handed plunge oops as long as I don't bend the saw on that to get it look at that we're there already I think all right okay yep gets a bit tight down there <laughs> yes because this, this wood's a little keeps grabbing the saw. You know what? I need I need some wax. So an old trick, a piece of good old candle wax and wax up the saw because it's getting stuck in the slot. So let's get a bunch of wax on that and that should help that reduce the friction in there so I can actually get to the bottom of the slot <laughs> and there it goes lovely right same this end it's much better height for cutting that is you know Anyway, right. that's it right now. Let's drill it out. Let's get a drill. All right, okay, we'll just run our faults in a bit. I'll have to go both sides. There you go. Oh. Gotta try and keep it straight. Oh. A one inch false a bit <laughs> right so with any luck we should yeah that should just pop out I'm not sure why it hasn't actually let me get a hammer and a chisel a nice sharp one inch chisel should be able to pop this little puppy out of here right so 
So I'm going to cut this just shy of the line here, like that. And start chopping that out. It should come up square. And at some point, yeah, it's, starting. it's starting to move, isn't it? Yeah. That should pop out. See, the, the old in the old days, you'd have had to have done this all by chisel, like that. Oh, there it goes. All right, that's uh, okay. Okay, there it goes. Huh. All right, that's one. All right, let's make another one of those. Oh, that's a beastie. Oh. So I'm thinking about hand cutting this thing, at least to get the length, because then I can manipulate this on the bandsaw. So this next section, uh, this will be a, this will be cut into chevrons, roughly like this. Like that, okay. And those will be the weights for the clappers. Let's see. This is going to take some doing. Okay, here we go. We are through. And there it is. So let's find the center. I've got to mark where my chevrons are going to be. There, 35. Right, let's see if that looks right. This is the other tr ch most challenging part. Slotting those was one job. And now I've got to figure out how to put chevrons on this. Right, so what I'm going to do is bring that up to there, to the center, and mark out. Like that. All right. And then reverse it. Actually, I'll do each one of that side first. And then reverse the reverse the tool. Like that. Come back the other way. Oh, no, it's got a divot. I must have drilled up against it or something at some point. Right, there we go. That's, that's the chevrons. And the next step was to take the 6x6 into the workshop and cut along the markouts to produce the weights for each of the styles. Now then, again, it's, I was wearing a mask because this is pressure treated and uh, you really don't want to mess with pressure treated when you're using power tools particularly without some kind of, you know, there's some pretty nasty stuff in here and you don't want to be breathing it in. Anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about something. Let me get this. Okay, I wanted to talk about what I was doing here on the bandsaw and I didn't know this till today. My buddy Rob, who's a bandsaw expert, uh, gave me a couple of useful tips that I'm going to share with you. Uh, uh, one of them was, of course, to make sure it's all about, bandsaws are all about the blade, the quality of the blade, the sharpness of the blade, so a, a very sharp, and that is actually, his recommendation was to just run my finger up, and you can feel that, even though I've just been through, that's sharper than I thought, that's actually trying to cut me, so it's it's pretty sharp so that's good and as you can see it did the job it's got through six inch fairly wet wood there which is, is pressure treated and the other thing was you'll notice i was using uh this here dust extraction uh, and i didn't know this until today when 
you are using a saw, the accuracy is very often dependent, particularly on this, is, is, is entirely dependent on getting rid of sawdust from the kerf. If there's sawdust buildup in there, you won't cut accurately. Uh, it, it sort of interferes with the cut. So the reason I was using a, a dust extractor there with this cutting was to help improve the accuracy. Who knew that that uh, dust extraction was actually important for an accurate cut as well? I didn't know that till today. So thanks for that one, Rob. Good, good man. And so now we're gonna we're gonna have to mortise these out and put the actual slats for the uh, for the for the gate into these so i started by marking out the position of each mortise on each of the weights and then to speed up the mortising process i drilled a series of holes using a three-quarter falsner bit and then i used a three-quarter inch chisel to shape out the hole and cut the mortise to depth. I think I've got these. Uh, I want to get the bottoms flat just so I can get some glue down in there but I think these are pretty much ready. Uh, a combination of drilling and chopping has got them got them set. And let me uh, clean out the holes. One trick I found for doing this while I was working is if we use this to clean the holes out it uh, gets all the chips out right okay i need i've got to go and cut a couple of these actually that's that's probably too long but uh that is basically the the deal and that is the bottom rung of the of the gate uh, you can see why it's called a clapper gate can't you and it looks like a big bell clapper doesn't it but there so I'll glue and I'll run a dowel through here because I've done I've done blind mortise and then go right through so I'll run a big dowel probably maybe I'll double up actually and put two dowels in there uh, to pin that on but I'll, I'll glue it for now but that that's basically it okay confession time I need to take another two I'm taking actually a two and a half inch extra depth in this slot here because these are short and the reason i'm having to make that longer is because the the total distance of these slots in these weights these chevron shaped weights is actually 38 inches and i'd only caught 36 inch slots in there because at the time i wasn't quite sure how these would turn out space wise but you know lesson learned Okay, so the next step, folks, I've decided to use oak for my styles on this gate uh, because the pine was too twisty. And uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, within a week of being uh, installed, the gate will will twist and uh, the, the, the styles will twist and we won't be able to use the gate. So, because uh, once they twist in those post slots, it, it's all over, it won't work anymore. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna I've, I've purchased some this is red oak I picked this up from my local big box um, and I'm going with a narrower beam here uh, these, these slots were cut for three and a half but this is in fact two and a half by this is two, this was x three by one so it's two and a half by about three quarters so I think it'll go in the slots and what I'm going to do is I'll add a wedge in there uh, to make up the, the where I cut the slot too wide so just a design change on the fly shouldn't affect anything but uh, it, you know it's a bit cheaper to buy the wood like this and if it twists it you know it's gonna have to twist more if it's thinner to actually get stuck in the slot so that's the theory and of course if I put a, a coat of some kind of some kind of preserver on here then I think that'll also help with the to avoid twisting right so the next step is an assembly step we're gonna take this guy here this is the number one weight this is the one that sits at the bottom all right and I've actually cut these at different lengths we got these two here are six inches different these two are the same I may have to come in and trim them just for aesthetic looks but if you think about it the way the gate works it needs a longer one at the top because that's gonna have the furthest travel as it as it tips down anyway let's do it let's get some glue in there 
So nice generous dauber glue and we want it in the bottom. So that's just kind of like, ooh, hello. All right, let's pour some in the bottom. Just there. Get some on the sides, like that. And uh, let's put it, spread that around on there like that, where the wedge will be as well. Let's get plenty in there. That's, uh, should help with the longevity of this gate that way. Lovely, I actually like this because I can get the glue in there good and then I can glue up the wedge as well. Right, here we go. Hmm, yeah, that's good. Nice and strong. <laughs> yep, I don't want to go too nuts because I don't want to crack the block, but that's it. That's in there, folks. Let's get some of that glue in the gaps there. Helps keep the moisture out, if nothing else. It occurred to me that another thing I needed to do was make sure that the styles were straight in the weights so they wouldn't be at an angle when I mounted them in the gate posts. So I used a roofing square and just a little bit of leverage to get them straight and tap the wedges in a bit harder so that they would be firm. And to really lock things down I decided to put a three quarter inch oak dowel through the joint. So the next step in the process was to figure out what distance to put the hole where the fulcrum will be so that the weight would return the gate style back to its resting position and it determined that it was about 14 inches from the back of the weight there. So I marked the bar and now I was ready to start mounting the styles into the slotted posts. All right, okay, so I've got my little mark in there. Let's get the get the auger bit on that. Try and get through as straight as I can. And then I need to hold that. Through. Right, that's the first one. Number two, and the trick here is to, I think, uh, that's, um, uh, it's kind of bigger than you think, isn't it? Is to, I'm gonna adjust that clamp, oh, to get me a level on this second one, because they should look level when it's all sort of resting on the ground, and that's my ground right there, so that's too high. So we're going to bring that down until it looks good level-wise. We'll mess with that in a minute. Hmm. Yeah, because I want this to line up here. Now, is that level-wise? What's that doing? Let's, um, let's see. Because that's going to require an adjustment. Is it up? Yeah, it's got to go up. To there. Well actually another thing, another way to check. Should be 11 and a half at the end here. Oh yeah, it's pretty close. Yes it is. Right, okay. Let's get the next bolt in. back to that that's number two so that's 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 operational all right so that clamps only just managing to hang on to that uh-huh 
okay that's it there we are okay right let's make another hole Right, let's do a f final functional test of the gate. Those will align like that, and each will push on the other. And I would say that that is a working clapper gate. Now the basic functional gate was ready, the next thing to do was to plant the posts and concrete them in. So what I'm doing here, just to make sure these stay in alignment, I've got a piece of oak here that I've used to clamp it and I'm also using it to keep it level in this direction. So these, these two are now level in this plane and I'm just gonna, I'm just wiggling it to get the concrete to settle in. So yeah, all right, let's wiggle it. And that'll make the concrete settle into the hole. See that going in? <laughs> yeah, sort of vibrating it as such. Okay, so that's good. Let's finish up. I'll use the leftover concrete for that to fill that hole in a bit more and we're done. Just got to let it set overnight and uh, we can mount the, the clappers on there tomorrow. All right, day three and I'm now fitting the clappers to the gate. The concrete is dried. I've I've put a coat of clear Thompsons on these to uh, to protect them and hopefully help reduce the loss of moisture and cause them to twist. And uh, I've just got the first clapper aligned here, so let's just and that one really doesn't move. Let's line that one up, find the hole. There it is. Good. <laughs> that is working, I would say. Lovely. Okay, so this is a slight bummer, but I've got to take all these off and cut these ends so that this will go down further. Um, I've noticed on the original designs, they would cut an angle on the end like that, which allows these to drop further because they're a little high to climb over. So I'm gonna take them all out and I'll mark them up first, take them all out and then, and then uh, cut them and then put them back. And hopefully, Let's mark where they come to now. Uh, I'll be able to gain another couple of inches, get those down a bit lower, and it'll be easy to walk over the gate. So let's get started. Okay, so let's wedge these in the down position. Remember, I mentioned the value of wedges the other day, and and there again is an example. And let's see how we can mark these uh, to get this to drop down further. So, all right, we'll, we'll just. What angle? That's what we need. We'll only be able to get the start of the angle on this one. I can finish that when I get it off. So we'll start from... And it, yeah, I don't see why it can't be that far down. Okay. okay having got, got them off, let's get these cut. wet oak. Yeah. 
get a little Thompson's on that. I should keep it good. So that's the, where they were coming before. So we've gained, oh, what is that? About three inches, nearly four inches. And that's a lot easier to get over now. It's nowhere near. So, <laughs> so that's a, that's, that adjustment has been worth doing. So there it is, folks. The, the finally finished clapper gate or clapper style sometimes called or even a tumble style is another name for it and I did some research on these apparently there's only about 16 in existence now in the UK that they know about and uh, so they're pretty rare over there and this again unless you know of one in the US this might be the only one of the, the only example of a of a clapper or tumble style gate in the US not sure but uh, it's nice to at least think it may be so there you go a pretty rare example of a of a farm type gate to keep the livestock in hopefully it'll keep the deer out of our garden and away from our vegetable patch and uh, but allowing us to get in and out of course uh, I would suggest if you're interested in the history of these things I would suggest you go to the Hungerford Virtual Museum uh, just Google Hunger, Hungerford Virtual Museum and uh, you will find and, and then look for tumble gates or clapper style or tumble style when you get on the site there's a little search field on there and it'll give you a history of these gates and they, they seem to be appearing in photographs as far back as the 1850s so they probably predate that by a fair, fair amount as well so there's a lot of interesting history about this particular style of gate anyway hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you again for some more gate building in the near future please click the like button if you found this video helpful and we'd love to have you as a subscriber, as there's always something interesting going on in Smoogleville. <laughs>